us you've got you got New England pride show us you've got New England pride stand up shout out show us you got New England pride show us you've got New England pride New England Pride. Hey kids, and welcome to um, the first episode of season three of New England Pride TV. Can you believe it's been three seasons? I know, it's so wonderful. High five on that one, baby. High five. First of all, uh, I didn't introduce <laughs> you to my co-host. This is the lovely Tina. And Tina is, as I always say, the backbone of this show. Mm -hmm. She gathers lots of information. She helps us promote. She helps us book guests. So it's all it's thanks to you. So thank thank you, you for all you do. I'm glad to help with whatever I can. And thank you at home for watching because um, we we now go out to almost two million homes. We are we are in um, we are airing in stations all over New England now. Uh, and if you're watching on the Cape, welcome to New England Pride TV. Welcome. And Portland. Hello, Portland. Um, we recently added you because this will air and um, there for the first time, so yes. it's very exciting. Very exciting. Um, and hopefully, we're making a difference in the community. We get wonderful fan mail, so thank you for sending us private messages and fan mail. If you would like to see a specific subject matter covered on New England Pride TV, mm -hmm. just go to our New England Pride TV Facebook page, NE Pride TV on Facebook, like our page. Send us a message about how much you absolutely adore us. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and want to see a certain subject matter covered on the show. Uh, if you have any feedback, comments, questions, or concerns. I feel like I've said that before. Yeah, we're here for you, you yes. know. Um, we're going to start off the show. Uh, we have, we'll also have to thank our sponsors, because without our sponsors, we wouldn't be here. And yes. sponsors are, are so important. Um, yes. I recently got a gift from the Hanover Theater, which is uh, their Broadway series uh, gift. And it's one of the things that I think would make a great gift for you to give to somebody else or even give a gift to yourself. Um, by just eight payments of $66, you can get tickets to see Broadway caliber shows at the Hanover Theater. They've got a Christmas Story musical, they've got Cabaret, they've got Something Rotten, The Jersey Boys, which I saw and which are fantastic. Uh, Rent is coming back. It's the 20th, can you believe it's the 20th wow. anniversary tour yeah, of that's Rent? That's amazing. That was a huge mega hit yes. back in Broadway. Yeah. Uh, Bright Star, The King and I, and many, many more. All those things are coming to the Hanover Theater. And we love the Hanover Theater for supporting us, uh, as well as you for supporting us, because mm -hmm. you stop us on the street and tell us how much you like the show. I TV. love New England Pride TV. <laughs> and how much you love Lady Sabrina. My favorite is Lady Sabrina. That was an awesome segment, yes. yeah. Uh, we're going to start right off with our Pride Pets segment because because of Pride Pets, we've been able to find many homes for some little furry friends. Yeah. So this month, we're featuring Dog Orphans Incorporated, or Inc. They were founded over 40 years ago by a small group of animal lovers dedicated to saving dogs from pain and suffering. Dog Orphans house stray homeless and unwanted dogs until suitable permanent homes are found. Dog orphans teach and promote the importance of responsible dog ownership. That's so important. Yes. If you want to reach out to Dog Orphans, Inc., you can call them at 508-476-1855. And you can also go to their website, which is dogorphans.com. So we have a jam-packed show coming at you right now. New England Pride TV is brought to you by the Hanover Theater for the Performing Arts. Remax Vision, Bay State Savings Bank, Safe Homes, Joseph Gonzalez Dofrain, Boston Wedding Photographer, Paul Chase and Interior Design, Nuovo Restaurant, Creative Cabinets. Dr. Frank P. Fetchner Plastic Surgery. Fallon Health, making our communities healthy. And Crown Bakery.
Hey kids, and we are back. I'm here with the cutest couple I know, Laura and Stacy, who are developing something very exciting called the Creative Hub. Now, what's, how did this get inspired? Well, um, Stacy and I are both art educators, and as art educators in the Worcester Public School System, we wanted to figure out a way to bring arts to a greater audience, to an entire community. Now, can you tell me and our viewers at home what will be happening at the Hub? Sure, I could start with our mission statement, which is um, as a nonprofit to provide affordable and accessible arts opportunities for the entire community with a focus on at-risk and underserved youth. Wow, that's powerful. The Hub itself will be uh, comprised of multiple avenues. Um, we have a youth program, mm -hmm. an after-school program. We have a maker space, which is a, a collaborative workspace for artists. A membership-based one will have two beautiful event venues to be able to uh, rent out and then we have artist studios that we are renting out and including uh, dance studios in the ground level. Now tell me uh, what what age does the classes start? Uh, the classes are going to be school age classes so kindergarten all the way up through high school. Wonderful now event space that people can rent them out for? Absolutely we have this gorgeous 4,000 square foot indoor gymnasium with a suspended track and then we also have the rooftop which is about 4,000 square feet as well. A rooftop? Yes. A rooftop event space? Yes, hopefully Ooh. the first rooftop event space in the city of Worcester. That yes. is a big plus too, huh? Overlooking downtown. So. Now, um, you're trying to, what I do call, what I'm trying to say is you fund a need, you're trying to fund this, and how is that going for you? It's great. So we had phase one. That was the first step for our project, and we closed on the building and the parking lot this past April, so that was huge for us. And now we're fundraising for our capital campaign. That's for the construction of the building. The building was an old boys club on Ionic Ave in Worcester. It was built in 1914, so it needs complete restoration. Mm -hmm. And you can help support our project by going to creativehubworcester.org and donating to our Go Get Funding campaign. This is it's so inspirational, too, for the art community. Art has just exploded in the Worcester, um, central Massachusetts area, really. Nice. It's just, it's just, it's everywhere now between powwow and what you guys are doing. And um, so one of the things that I wanted to ask you is, um, being a musician myself, will music be included in any of these art spaces, too? And Yes, absolutely. We've got um, a couple different avenues for music. We have the event spaces that um, musicians and uh, bands can rent out to have their own events on. And then we also have people like sound engineers who are renting studio spaces. That is very yes. cool. Yes. Now, will there be people there um, teaching sound or any, any kind of...? Uh... Many of our tenants um, who've already signed on are interested in teaching as well. Oh, so we have a brilliant. filmmaker who wants to teach film. And then we also have some sound engineers who want to do some editing as well. That yeah, is Creative so. Hub is really going to be an ecosystem, so every aspect of programming that we have is connected to a different aspect of programming. Okay. Uh, now, one more question. I know it's a very quick interview. You're pressed for time. We're pressed for time. Mm -hmm. However, um, the, the space itself, you mentioned it's a historic building. Are we be keeping any parts of the original building? or? Yeah, so we're actually um, applying for historic tax credits for part of our fundraising campaign. And yes. um, just as artists and art lovers, we just love the character that the building provides. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful that if we add any contemporary aspects, they are not going to sort of destroy any of the yeah. historical They're character that's flow already with the there. Wonderful. We have a wonderful Absolutely. architecture firm that we've hired, Gensler, yeah. um, and they are really fantastic <laughs> at renovating historic buildings. Yes. This is a very exciting uh, yes. endeavor. Now, uh, for all of the uh, viewers out there who are art lovers, you might be artists, musicians, you might want to learn something, you may want to donate to this great cause, and you can do so by... Checking us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you can go to our website at creativehubworcester.org. It's a quick interview, but we've got a lot of information out there, and that's what I wanted to do. Thank Excellent. you so much Thank for you having so us much. Much. Thank you. We'll be back. Hi kids, we're back with New England Pride TV. Our guest right now is Donna Witt Henderson, who is going to be teaching me and you at home about microblading, permanent cosmetics, and uh, first event. We have a lot to talk about. First of all, welcome. Thank you Thanks so Thanks for coming. Much. We, we booked um, Donna probably a year ago, and yes. it's finally, we are booked a year in advance, which is wonderful for this show, but uh, it's, it's sad that you had to wait so long, but here we are. I'm so, happy. <laughs> me Thank too. Thank you. First of all, let's jump right in. Um, what is microblading? I have never heard of that. Microblading is a manual tattooing technique. So I use a, a tool that is not any blades. 
they are actually acupuncture needles that are mm -hmm. placed side by side. Mm -hmm. And we, once the brow is designed, then uh, the pigment is selected to uh, match the skin color, uh, the skin tone, and um, we go from there. And uh, basically, I dip the uh, tool uh, needles into pigment, and then I hand draw so that they look like hair strokes. So each, each individual hair is a, basically a tattoo? Yes. Okay. Yes. But even though it's called blading, there's no blades no involved? No blade involved, okay. no. Uh -huh. And we're very, very uh, concerned about blood-borne pathogen, uh, sanitation. We, no microblader or permanent cosmetic technician can work in a salon. And if they are, it's a no-no. Okay. The Board of Cosmetology and Barbering do not want anything to do with us. And so we have to have private studios, and it's all governed by the state of Massachusetts, and then each city or town can adopt as much or as little mm -hmm. of the rules and regs as they want. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, getting back for a second, you said sure. you, you, you draw on the brow, or is it a, do you I hand design. Hand, is there a stencil involved or anything? Uh, for, we're artists, yes. and so some people may use stencils. I don't mm -hmm. use a stencil. It's all considered uh, the golden ratio, which Da Vinci actually did. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. I learned about that with a, from a cosmetic surgeon. Yes. 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 And so um, we're trained to hand design, and then it's a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm not going to put a thick brow on someone who is used to a thinner brow. Mm -hmm. However, once the brows uh, heal, then they reduce by 30%, and the color lifts by about 20. That's an interesting process. I wasn't mm -hmm. aware of that. Yes, and then um, about two months after the initial procedure, then I provide a touch-up. And so then we fine tune everything. Yeah, fine tune everything. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. uh, is it drawn on like a little brush stroke, like each little hair stroke? Is um, actually, when I, I draw the um, outline, there are two lines, and that I work in between those two lines. Oh, I see. And so then the hair strokes, I work behind the individual. Mm -hmm. So um, that's my field of vision. I'm working right. basically upside down. Yeah, yeah. And then the hair strokes are are placed. Um, front, top, bottom, and tail. So it's very, very precise. delicate proce very, precise. Very, very precise. And not only do you do that, but you... My hands oh, are steady. No. You're very, yeah, very steady. <laughs> you also do uh, cosmetic tattooing also. Yes. And now, uh, you, was, you were saying earlier when we were speaking before the interview that you work also with the transgender community. I love, I love and adore the transgender community. Um, they're the most humble, um, appreciative and grateful group of people I have ever worked with, and it's it, it makes me cry. There's, I mean, really and truly, they're um, awesome, yes. and I, I'm grateful and able to participate in first event that happens every year. That's what I was going to bring up. Yeah. You were you were at first event last yes. year. Yes, my my band played first event last year at Mechanics Hall. And you had a booth at first event. I did, yes. And um, you gave people informational packets about what you do, and yes, and I actually did procedures in real time there. Oh, you did? Yes, I didn't know that. Yes, wow, that's and, great. And um, I have the same uh, booth set up for this year as well. Fantastic. It's already in the works. Now, if uh, our viewers at home want to find out more about what you do, uh, what is your website, please? Uh, it's browse dot inc i n k. That's really just <laughs> dot com. No. No, that's browse. Browse. All right. Thank that's you. It. Well, I learned some something today about microblading. Yes. And hopefully everyone's at home did. And you know the other things that I provide as well. I do eyeliner and lipstick um, lips. My lips are actually tattooed, and my eyeliner is nice. as well. Thank All right, you. Great. And then uh, for women that have had breast cancer, I do 3D areolas. You do some good things. Yeah. All right. We'll be back with more right after this. Thank you. Hey kids, we're back with New England Pride TV. I'm here now with Liam Campbell, who is a, ex he's an extraordinary photographer. I first found out about you, Liam, um, because I was at a dinner party at a friend's house and he had your book on his coffee table. And then I found out that you are from Providence. And I was, I said, I've got to get him on the show. So welcome. 
Thank you. Welcome to New England Pride TV. Cheers. Um, now, how did you come about with the idea of this book? First of all, tell everybody at home um, what the name of the book, your books are. Okay. So it's called Elska or Elska Magazine. Elska Magazine. Now, what does Elska stand for? Uh, it doesn't stand for anything. It's a word. It means love in Icelandic. Now, are you from Iceland? Uh, is, that uh, a, is that a no? <laughs> yeah, it means no, I'm not from Iceland. But you, but you just fell in love with the word? Uh, I, it's the first country I ever traveled to okay. outside, and I just fell in love with travel from that point. And so that I thought I you. wanted to take it for that, yeah. Now, how long have you been um, such an extraordinary photographer? Oh, well, I did photography in college, but then... So just two years ago? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Right, got that. <laughs> um, but I didn't use it professionally. And then I took a job as a flight attendant because I love to travel. And that got me doing so much photography every time we lay over in a different city. Oh. And then I thought, maybe I could make a book of some of the photos I take of mm -hmm. guys when I travel. Your journey, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, then I decided, sure, I'll make it like a magazine. So it's like a little book. You see? There you yeah, go. Thank you very um, much. They're like a bookazine. The, oh, so it's a magazine and a coffee table. It's a bookazine. It's a book, but it's a magazine because there's a new one every two months, and you can subscribe to it. And, I, uh, uh, so yeah. I can subscribe to this. Yeah, yeah. And the one comes to my door once every two months. Every two months. And it's yeah. full of interesting people. Yeah. And I will, I, I will tell you. That I open the, <laughs> I open the first page, and there is my friend Joe Demaro yes. from uh, Providence, yes. who was Mr. Gay Providence. Yes. And he is the creator of Stay, uh, Stay Fearless, I think it is? Or That's right, Stay Fearless. Stay Fearless, yeah, right. I know. Yes. I know. Um, now, how did you get um, the idea to make the book? Like, this is, this is what, something I want to do. Um, you know, it's just, I love photography. I love travel. I like boys. Yeah. So, you know, like, let's, I will tell let's put viewers, it all together. I, I will tell our viewers at home, the, the images are stunning. They're, they're beautiful. But um, a lot of the images are nudes. Sure. Tastefully done. Yeah, yeah. And uh, which makes me want to subscribe right now. Mm -hmm, All mm -hmm. right. Now, um, now this one says Providence on it. Yes. Do you do you hit different cities in the? Yes. So that's that's it. Each issue is a different city. Okay. And I go there. I put some messages on social media. Say you know, looking for local guys to participate. Yeah. I take your picture either you know walking around the city or at home. Mm -hmm. Can be nude. Can be clothed. Whatever they want. And yeah. then each of them also write a story. Something personal from their life. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So each, per now I, I'm going to, this is mine. I'm going to take this home yeah, with me. Sure. And I'm going to find out about each one of these models. And they're, they're, what kind of stories do they write? Oh, gosh. I mean, they can write about anything. The, the one that Joe wrote was sort of autobiographical and about coming out. Mm -hmm. um, another guy wrote about a threesome he had. OK. Another guy wrote about. I had about a threesome once, if you oh. count me and two hand puppets. Does that count? No. <laughs> Two hand puppets. Well, no. Uh, <laughs> that'll be my story in the that'll next book. Right. That'll be so your. So what story. cities do you do? Uh, so I've done, I've done twelve so far. Twelve of these. Yes. So it's Berlin, Reykjavik, Lisbon, Taipei, wow. Mumbai. That's amazing to yeah. me. That's incredible. Now, when you, when you do go to different cities and you do photograph uh, these uh, different people, like you said, it can be in your home. It could be uh, any place they choose, or do you choose? Uh, yeah, generally they choose. If it's a certain neighborhood that they enjoy spending time in, yep. then that's Where good. Where they feel you the know. most comfortable? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be doing all tourist locations, you know, right. not Big Ben and Eiffel right. Tower, just right. kind of normal neighborhoods, wow. regular people. There's no hired models. There's no, like, you know, it's not celebrities. It's just kind of like you've traveled to the city, you've met some of the local guys. Right. And you get to know them a bit. So if you are, if, so if our viewers would, at home would like to subscribe or buy uh, this magazine, they can go where? Uh, it's elskamagazine.com. How easy is that? Elskamagazine.com. Yeah. It has been just a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Absolute pleasure. Cheers. We'll be back with more right after this. Hi, everyone. It's me, Miss Lady Sabrina. And instead of doing a letter, I think that we're just going to talk about expectations. Expectations from the gay community, expectations about respect. One of the things that I noticed, you know, um, Aaron Carter, all right, Aaron Carter came out, you know, as bisexual. 
And I found it really interesting because, you know, opposed to everyone just going, yo, congratulations, you know, being your true self, good for you. Instead, what happens? Everyone is talking about, you know, dis either really disgusting sexual stuff or talking about, oh, how he supported Trump. And so someone can't come out and show any level of growth. He's still relatively young. You know, it fascinates me because on my post alone, there are four or five individuals just condemning Aaron Carter. You know, and it fascinates me because two or three of them are cheating on their partners. So, where's the morality? Where's the morality? You know, it's like we promote togetherness and love and acceptance, but we're the most judgmental, unaccepting group there is. So, how are we to achieve a certain level of respect and acceptance through others if we're not able to give it ourselves? You know, gay pride for Worcester is coming up. And, you know, and there are all these great events and community things and painting sidewalks and and yet we still can't get it together on the most basic thing supporting someone or supporting anyone who decides to live their true self despite of their life before. I mean, how many in the gay community were married before? How many have children, you know, through a heterosexual relationship? We don't see them as damaged. We don't see them as less than. We see them as someone who came out later in life. So my, my question to everyone would be this. What exactly do you stand for? Because if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Do you stand for peace and inclusion and love? Or do you stand for only if it's for me? I really hope to see you all of pride. I really hope, you know, to see a lot of friendly faces. But I really do want people to think about what is it that you really believe in? And if you really believe in it, then I suggest you start living it. And if you want to just be nasty, <laughs> at least have the common sense to keep your mouth shut. All right, I love you all. And I can't wait to see you all at Pride. And I hope this finds you well. Love and light. And now it's time for a segment we like to call Out with Joe and Teddy. What do, you have for, what do you have for us this month? Well, actually, we're taking a look at social groups. Social groups had their heyday prior to the Internet and even into the Internet for a few years, but they really lost a lot of steam and membership as the social media platforms took off. But we see a increase in social, or, you know, social groups. And, and we're going to take a look at Chiltern Mountain Club, which is the oldest LGBTQ uh, club, social club that is in, in New England, in the country for that matter, began in 1977. So we're going to learn a little bit about it and why its membership is coming back. Great. Let's watch. Welcome to this edition of Out With Joe on New England Pride TV. And this month we take a look at a very large outdoor social club. And joining me from the Chiltern Mountain Club is Murray and Scott. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Murray, you. thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Thank you. Well, we're talking about an organization that began 40 years ago, and it was to fill a void, and that was a lack of organizations for the LGBT community that didn't have any outdoor hiking, camping-type organizations. Tell us a little bit about the beginning days. Well, in the early days, our, our founder, Sturgis, was in Boston trying to find some outdoor things to do. He scheduled an event, and no one showed up on the first event. Don't you hate when that happens? Yeah, I hate when that happens, but when it's something you like to do, you try it again, and he did it a second time and got some friends to join. Uh, and the more he did it, the more people joined. And, and when we hit our heyday, we had about 1,000 members uh, and had a couple hundred at events as we did things. And as any social group has experienced, the invention of the Internet and all the apps has, well, taken or siphoned off from social groups. And, but you've seen a little bit of a resurgence here, Murray. We have. We have. And we're happy about that. We promote it as much as we can. We're glad of this opportunity. Um, 
I, I think people are making different choices these days about things that they're willing to be members of, uh, partly for the time commitment and also even for modest financial commitments. People don't just sign up sure. because, Absolutely. you know, for no good reason. Yeah. So um, we're looking for people who are really going to take an interest in the club, lead events from time to time, and just make the thing thrive. Well, you guys just finished uh, one of your big annual events in Maine, just got wrapped yeah. up with that. Yes, uh, so we do events in all six New England states. Uh, we did the event in Bar Harbor uh, in Arcadia Park just this past couple of weekends. Uh, there was hiking, there was some biking, we have a big lobster fest. Uh, there, there's uh, different things at different times all year round for the children. And what is the membership? What is the financial commitment or dues that you would pay, Murray? It's very modest. I mean, it barely covers overhead. The membership dues are $25 a year. Most events are free. And events that have a fee are really just to cover the costs of that event. Um, we have some other costs that we cover through the membership fees, like uh, internet expenses and that sort of thing. Um, but otherwise, it's it's. I think for most people, the decision is really not about whether or not they can afford it. That's right. And it's very inclusive, right, Scott? It's open to everybody, and it's something you can do as much or as little as you want. Yes, and so we, we uh, open to all genders, all orientations. There's no sort of test. We actually don't even have to be a member to attend events. Uh, you you register on the site, sign up, go on a all couple right. events. All right, and what we'll do is we'll put this information on the Outward Joe site as well as New England Pride TV site. So you can check it out and we'll link it over to you. And again, it's open to everyone. You don't have to be a member, but if you enjoy the outdoors, hiking, camping, even water type sports, yep. then uh, Chilton Mountain Club is worth checking out. For New England Pride TV, along with Murray and Scott, and of course, Teddy, I'm Joe Mangiacotti. Sadly, once again, we've come to the end of this episode of New England Pride TV. It was jam-packed full of great information. I hope you learned something. I know I did. Uh, how about you? Did you learn anything? Yes. Yeah, yeah. the um, microblading. Yeah, I didn't know about so that either. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Now, why don't you tell our viewers at home, Tina, what you've been up to? Um, I do um, a little segment inside the show Out With Joe for WCRN Radio every Saturday morning, 8.30 on your AM dial. Um, at 7.30, and it's called the Music Minute. And I go to different clubs, and I promote um, the bands and the venues that you know are playing in the area for the weekend. Fantastic. So you find out everything that's going on, right? Yeah, that's and great. I let you know. And uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the show that uh, I'd like you to go please like our Facebook page, NE Pride TV, and our website, newenglandpride.tv. And we just got a Twitter account. It's New England Pride one so simply go to Twitter and find out about what's happening with us. Uh, you'll have all some information about what's happening around New England. And mm -hmm. uh, we'd like it if you'd follow us because we're just starting and we, we're newbies. Yes. We're newbies. Yeah. Uh, I've never been a newbie at anything before. Like, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been a newbie at anything. But we'd like to thank our guests. We had Donna uh, teaching us about microblading and permanent cosmetics and her work with the transgender community uh, first event. We had Liam, this amazing photographer with yes, that book. such an interesting book. You should, and, really should check him out. And then we had uh, Laura and <laughs> Stacy, who were doing uh, fantastic work with the arts community. That was, yeah. that was great. Yeah. So once again, thank you for watching New England Pride TV. And please don't be afraid to shine your light because... You may be shining the way for someone in need. That's right. Until next time, thank you for watching New England Pride TV. You got New England pride, show us. You've got New England pride. Stand up, shout out, show us. You got New England pride, show us. You've got New England pride. Mm -hmm. New England pride.